friends, welcome back to my channel, Planty Princess 92. My name is Ashley, and in today's video, it is not an unboxing, it is a plant care video on the Pachira Aquatica. As you see here, I have two of these plants. Um, I have your standard green form, both with braided trunks. And then I have a one of a kind, very rare and hard to come across variegated form. So I'll just kind of tell you a quick little story on how I came across this amazing beauty. So I went to my local grocery store, which in my area is a giant. And anytime I go to the grocery store, the first place I go is always the plant section. So I'm in the plant section looking around at all the plants they have. And this was before I even had um, this money tree. Um, so I'm looking around and I've always wanted a money tree, but I know it's bad luck to buy it for yourself. Um, so obviously I never bought one for myself and I came across this. Now, I saw that it had slight variegation to it, but at the time, because I had never seen one, I wasn't sure if it was just the leaves yellowing or what was going on with it. So I left the store and I passed up on it, didn't think twice about it. Um, the next day, my boyfriend had bought me this one because I was talking to him about how I was looking at the um Pachira Aquatica or money trees and I really wanted one but it was bad luck to buy for myself so he surprised me with a um with the green form which is this one right here so the day after that I go back to uh my grocery store and I go to the plant section once again and I'm looking and I'm looking and this plant was still there so that made me just figure, I'm just gonna take a better look at this plant. And I don't know what made me look at it, especially because I already had just now gotten this one, so it's not like I was without one. Um, but something made me go over to it and take a closer look at it. And I'm really glad I did. Um, I noticed that it was variegation. It wasn't that the plant was dying, it wasn't yellowing, like it was an actual variegated form of a Pachira aquatica. So there's one, two, there's four different um, trees. There's four different trunks. So there's four different plants growing in this one pot, all braided together. Um, one of them I think has died off. Well, it, it was like that ever since I got it, um, but it doesn't have anything growing out of it. And I left it just because I was hoping maybe something would uh, come out of it, but it hasn't still. And I've had this for quite a few months now. Um, but anyways, so out of the four plants, there's three that are still actively growing, two that are plain, just like this green form, and then one that is the variegated form. So that leads me to think that, I mean, it had to be a mistake. Somebody must have not noticed it, or it was just, you know, it was just probably little, like this little guy right here when they first put it in and obviously couldn't tell that it was a variegated form because, you know, it's one variegated form and mixed in with two regular uh, forms. And I got this for either $9.99 or $14.99. But either way, now I've only come across two since I've gotten this. Um, just to kind of see, you know, what they were going for, where you could find them, and they were both over $200. So I can't even believe that I came across this amazing deal. That never happens to me, never. So I am pleased to have this amazing, beautiful uh, plant in my collection. So now we'll get into, um, you know, some things about the Pachero Aquatica. Um, as I've mentioned, the more common names for this plant is, you know, the money tree, which is probably what most of you will know it as. It also goes by the Malabar chestnut or the French peanut tree. Um, and it has a reputation for being one of the easiest um, trees to grow indoors. Now, 
the way we're most accustomed to seeing this is with, like I said, the three or four trunks uh, braided together into one twist. Um, most of the time, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so most of the time, the more popular, um, not I wouldn't say more popular, the more common way you'll find these trees is with a set of five leaves. Now, um, this one has five, this one has six. So in rare cases, they can even have six or seven leaves, um, which is considered to be more luck. So um, coming along with the money tree, it has some feng shui meaning and um, it represents good fortune and prosperity, good luck, wealth, health, all that good stuff. So now when you see it uh, with five leaves, the five leaves, leaves represent the elements. So that's earth, water, fire, wind, and metal. Um, now talking about that, there is actually a short story that goes along with uh, this symbol of luck and prosperity and how it came about its name, Money Tree. Um, the story is a poor man once prayed for good fortune and money and came across this odd plant in his field. So he takes this plant home as an omen uh, to, hopefully, to hopefully come across good fortune and come, come into some money and ends up selling this plant, ends up selling plants that he's grown from their seeds. So along with that, later a Taiwan truck driver um, came up with the braided trunk idea as a way to like lock in the luck or trap in the fortune. So that's the symbolism and the meaning that go and the story that goes behind um, the money tree. That's where it got its name from. So according to Feng Shui, the money tree, like I've mentioned before, is unlucky to buy for yourself, but as a gift, it's used to enhance the energy of wealth and prosperity in the wealth and money Bagua area, which is the southeast corner of the home or the room where you're putting it and where you're, you know, supposed to put it. Um, with that, each, each direction has a different energy. So Southwest was the, you know, was the wealth, um, money and like wealth energy area. An East corner would be like health and family. So that's if you want to bring good luck into the health and family aspect of your life. And then with everything that comes good, you know, we also have to have a bad. So there are also bad or, so to speak, unlucky areas where you can place your money tree, which are areas you, you know, if you believe in feng shui or good luck or bad luck, you wouldn't want to place these trees in those areas. Um, one of those areas is the love area, which is the southwest corner of your home or of the room where you're placing the plant in. Um, now, you would think, you know, oh, why the love area? You would, you know, if you want to improve that area of your life, why wouldn't you want to introduce the money tree, which is a sign of good luck and good fortune into that area? Well, um, as, as you, as I'm sure you, you've all heard this saying, love doesn't mix with money. So that is pretty much self-explanatory as to why they don't suggest putting this symbol of prosperity and good luck in the love area, which again is that um, southwest corner. Along with that, there's one other place that you wouldn't want to put this money tree, according to Feng Shui, would be in a bathroom. And although this tree does like a little higher humidity, you would think a bathroom would be perfect if it accommodates the light needs as well. But because it's a bathroom where there's a toilet and drains, it's 
Um, it's rumored that, you know, that would flush or drain the positivity, the positive energy or the good luck away. So those are the areas you do and don't want to put your Pachira Aquaticas. So moving on to the foliage and the physical features of this plant, um, whether or not you believe in the luck of the money tree, it's definitely a popular and easy care plant that will complement um, the, the decor of any, any room in your home. So in the wild, these trees tend to grow 18 meters tall, but indoors, as you know, they stay, they stay more compact. So now as I have here with these two, these two are more in a bonsai form. So they're, they're about uh, a foot, a foot tall, um, but they can grow from this foot tall anywhere to three or four feet tall as a floor plant. The leaves are a bright shiny green and they have that palmate shape with long, wider in the middle leaflets that extend from the petiole. So kind of like a hand, especially if they have that, the five leaves is exactly like a hand. Um, and they have smooth green bark, which I'll show you on this one here since it's longer. Well, at this point it's not bark, but they have the smooth green stems, as you can see, which eventually as the, as the stems age will turn into bark and become brown and woody. The origin of this plant, it's native to Central and South America where it grows in tropical moist and swampy areas. Um, this is a very durable and um, hardy plant. It, it, it really does adapt well to many different environments and growing conditions, but will definitely, like any other plant, thrive if you give it the right conditions. Um, it requires more bright and direct light, especially for this variegated form since it has the yellowish to white variegation which makes it unable to photosynthesize to produce the energy the plant needs so with the little bit of green that it has you know it will require a little more light than this would now as you can see what comes along with that as with any variegated plant they tend to, if there's too much white and they can't photosynthesize and create energy, sometimes they die off or, you know, you can see the tips are starting to get a little, um, I don't know, wrinkled, I guess. Um, that's not because it's underwatered or overwatered or not receiving enough light um, because I have it in the same place as I have this one, but I also have a grow light over top of it to provide that extra amount of light for it. Um, with that being said, it can tolerate partial shade to even low light situations, but would obviously thrive with that little bit of higher light. These plants do prefer temperatures between 55 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, they can normally withstand temperatures as low as 45 degrees though, without dropping any of their leaves but I really wouldn't uh, recommend that. I wouldn't recommend going lower than that 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Since they're native to the tropical moist regions, they like that higher humidity and they thrive in that higher humidity. So I keep mine near a humidifier. You could, I, I also do this. Um, and if you don't have a humidifier, you could also mist your plant daily or, you know, as much as possible whenever you think about it, they definitely appreciate that extra, extra moisture. Even if you have a humidity, they appreciate that extra moisture. I water these plants. Now it's hard to give, you know, like every seven days, every 10 days, it's hard to say that because depending on the size of your plant, depending on the roots, depending on the condition, you have, whether it's hot, dry, humid, um, you know, it, 
that all depends how much water your plant uses and takes up. So these do definitely prefer dehydration in between waterings. They don't, they don't like to be overwatered. Um, they will easily develop root rot. They will easily drop leaves if they're overwatered as well as from cold drafts. So you do want to keep them away from any open um, doors and windows like in the winter. In the summertime, that will be perfectly fine. But air conditioners are definitely a no as well. Um, but getting back to the watering, I water mine when they are most of the way dry. So maybe about 80% dry, I'll stick my finger in and in this little pot, um, you know, if it's if it's most of the way dry down, I'll also stick in a, a moisture meter and when that gauge gets to about a one or a two, that's when I know to water it. Now this one does not have a drainage hole, so I water it very sparingly because I don't want to overwater it and it seems to be doing just fine. Um, it's always better to give less than more because it can always come back better and easier from underwatering than it can from overwatering. A lot of plants are very verbal, so you'll see them start to wilt and you'll know to water them, but by the time you realize you're overwatering a plant, the leaves are already yellowing and falling off and they don't turn green again, so you can't come back from that. Um, this one is in a cash pot, so it does have drainage holes in its nursery pot, but I water it the same, you know, when it's about 80% dry or a one or a two on my moisture meter. I do bottom water these and they do prefer a well draining airy mixture. So I um, have mine in a third potting mix one third perlite or pumice or something similar, as well as one third of orchid bark to kind of create that airy mixture, giving it more space for airflow and able to uh, dry a little bit quicker. Um, these also do grow really well uh, semi-hydroponically. So they thrive in either soil or in a semi-hydroponic system. You know, you can determine that. That's up to you how you want to grow yours, but they do do well in either. So that's something to think about uh, when getting a money tree of your own or not getting a money tree of your own, being gifted a money tree of your own because <laughs> it's bad luck to buy one for yourself. So for this one, I was in the store with my boyfriend and I went over to him and I said, you have to buy me this because I can't buy it for myself and I need it. Hurry, go get it. And he did, and here we are. So now fertilizer for this. If you've watched previous videos of mine, you know that I fertilize all of my plants with new plant food. Um, so I fertilize my plants in soil every time I water and the plants that I have semi-hydroponically, um, I have that already mixed in their solution. So my plants are always getting fed with plant, with new plant food every time I water, and that includes in the winter. Now, if you are going to go a synthetic route, and if I were to use a synthetic route, I would fertilize monthly at half the recommended strength um, during the growing seasons, and then in the winter, not at all, um, or bi-weekly at a quarter strength. Um, now, if I was doing synthetic route and I saw that some of my plants were still actively growing, including this one, I would then feed them in the winter at a quarter strength once, once a month and leave it at that. Um, because if plants, whether it's winter, summer, fall, spring, if plants are actively growing, they're obviously using energy. They obviously need nutrients. Um, but that's up to your discretion. That's just what I would do if and when my plants are actively growing through the winter if I were to use a synthetic um, fertilizer. And I have, when I first started getting into um, house plants, I was using synthetic fertilizers and I did feed the ones that were actively growing uh, at a quarter strength once a month through the winter and fall. This plant is 
not toxic in the leaves or the bark. So it is pet friendly, it is people friendly, but it does produce nuts that aren't edible or suitable for human or animal cons consumption um, due to the presence of cyclopropenoid fatty acids. So here's an interesting fact and a little story for you. Um, they, I'm going to say they because I don't know who really they is, but somebody did a study using six lab rats. Um, now, after eating the nuts that these trees produced, five of them died and their survive, their, the surviving rat um, developed enlarged organs. So like stomach, liver, kidney and whatnot. Um, so although there aren't any studies that have been done on humans, thank God that have eaten this nut, I wouldn't recommend doing so nor feeding it to your pets based on the study that I came across, um, while doing my research on the rats. So that pretty much sums it up for these, these beautiful, um, little trees. They are pretty cute when they're in their little compact form and they're really nice when they're a little larger too as floor, floor plants. So I guess that just all depends on how much space you have in your home and you know what, what and how you're looking to decorate. Thank you guys again for joining me in another video. I hope you learned um, a little or a lot about the Pachira aquatica and I hope you um, enjoyed seeing the variegated form. I'm just going to come up closer and just show you a little bit more of the leaves since I didn't get to show you the leaves of the variegation. It's really unique. And there are a couple different forms. I've seen a form that was kind of like speckled in variegation. So, so I've seen this form and then I've seen that form. And they're really interesting. And now if you see in this leaf right here, you see that it's starting to get a little dark green right at the tip of my finger. It's not focusing too well, but it's there. So normally so far all the leaves have developed like these with the green coming through the middle. And then I have this one that has that little variegation at the tip there. All right. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in the content I provide. If you have any additional care tips or questions on how you grow your Pachira Aquatica, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. It will greatly help others that are looking to purchase one of these to add to their collection or looking for others who may be struggling with theirs as well. Um, I really enjoy and love making these videos with you guys. So I do appreciate all the support. Every plant's a princess.